Welcome to another edition of Bear Down with Brian Jeffries. That would be me. The better looking man on the other half of the screen is Ryan Stotland, head women's tennis coach at the University of Arizona. Second season as head coach, sixth season overall. Wildcats were playing uh, outstanding tennis when unfortunately, like all spring sports, the season ended prematurely. And Ryan, I always like to start these uh, video chats out with asking you uh, about you, your family, your staff, your players, everybody good right now and, and hopefully well. Yeah, I think um, I think everybody's doing well for what we can. Obviously, we're all in the same boat, but um, you know, I think my motto has been survive and thrive. And so I tell everybody we're surviving and thriving and getting better on all fronts, family, friends and team. So um, that's kind of how we're how our motto is right now. And we're just finding ways to get better. All right, that's great to hear. So your team was up in Utah uh, mid-March. You had beaten Weber State. You were scheduled to play at Utah a couple of days later, and then obviously that got canceled. Uh, kind of take us through those couple of days there and how everybody got uh, back home. Um, it was it was very interesting because that was the time when uh, everything was not for sure about what was going on. So we actually thought we were waking up and playing Utah on um, Friday. We weren't sure if the place was even closed down and we had been talking to coach and, you know, they called about four hours before the match and said this, the campus is shut down. So we were kind of at a loss for words about the season and, you know, seeing if it was actually going to stop. And there was so many question marks and the girls were actually staying in a, um, in a place together. And so, it was a, it was a tough time because nobody actually knew their entire season was done until the last time last minute when we um, when we were going to leave and take off and so it was very very emotional. Um, I'm I'm very happy with you know our, our administration and Dave really fighting for these kids because I think they deserve it if they wanted another year. You have seven international players on your roster, so obviously from all different corners of the world, was everybody able to get home? Did they they want to get back home? Um, I think everybody wanted to get back home. We still have a few here. We actually have one. Their country is, is under martial law, so she's not really allowed to go back yet. We have two, uh, another one that wants to go home but um, can't because they're on quarantine. They're not even allowed to go out after dark. So um, most of the people are home. One got quarantined when she got back for a few weeks, but um, everyone else is home, and they're they're making do. But, yeah, we still have a few here in Tucson, and it's a great place to be with the warm weather. and. Still a few things open, so it's a better option for them. All right. Well, of course, tennis is a, a team sport. You've got to have at least two people to play. Uh, a lot of the, the team sports, baseball, softball, et cetera, they really can't do much right now. Uh, have you, how have your players been able to keep in shape or just get out and, and get some exercise? Um, I think our staff's done a great job of giving them many options. Our strength conditioning, uh, you know, they've been leading these great zoom yoga classes and they've had different kind of options and i think they've, they've provided a really good pathway of how to start i think our team also has our has high goals so they kind of try to keep each other accountable with activities and so they've given each other hard hard workouts hard classes and try to keep each other accountable for what they're doing that day because um, especially if you can't go outside some of them aren't allowed to they, they find a way to make it work in the garage or some of them have these they makeshift um we've, we've taken a look through all of them and some of them have some makeshift gyms uh it's pretty impressive what you come up with we have a girl um that's on instagram right now that just put up a post with she's out on a farm in england and she's using like you know hay hay bales and things like that <laughs> lift and stuff like that so you got to be creative in these times absolutely that's great to hear uh you have a very young team uh, and so all would be almost all of them would be back next season. Take us through where you are right now with your program and as it's it's building towards even more success. Um, I think we're trying to build this culture, and I think it really, really in my second year. Well, I, I would consider this a second year since we didn't finish it, but still, um, we we built this great culture where the the team does is propelling to where we really wanted. That was our goal when I first came in last year was to get a culture, a championship culture, as Dave calls it. Um, and so I think we've really reached that peak. And the next thing is just to get a lot better and get some of these wins against some of these programs um, that we've never beaten. And that's kind of why I was growing the hair to start. Not now I can't get a barber, but, um, but I was going to have them do whatever they want if we could beat one of these teams that our program's never beaten before. So I really thought we could do it this year. All right. You have a great story yourself. You were a walk on when you got to college to play tennis. You ended up number one on your team. So uh, that is a great lesson right there. Uh, tell us a little bit about your college career and how you achieved that goal. 
Um, well, I was a very good athlete, so I played a lot of team sports. And so, um, you know, when I first got there, I, I went to University of New Mexico. I, I didn't know the level that I could reach, and I wanted to reach my potential. So I decided to walk on to the best possible um, tennis school I could get into. And so um, they let me join the team, and they were very highly ranked. And, um, you know, I just kind of set, my set myself to do whatever was best for the team because that's what I always was, a team player. And, you know, it took me uh, about a year to really realize that I'm as good as anybody else out on the tennis court. And um, that's kind of, it's just, it's just this, um, tennis is such a mental sport, just like every sport that, you know, I overcame these things because uh, my mental, um, I guess, fortitude became really, really strong. Okay. So you mentioned you were an athlete. If you didn't play tennis, what would be sport number two for you? Ooh, well, my choice, I was a baseball and Basketball player. Basketball would be my favorite. I still play in the – well, I miss those games in, um, in Jefferson in the mornings that we always played as a staff. So missing the whole staff and not seeing them a lot. But, um, you know, those games in the morning at 645 were always a fun thing to do before, uh, before work. Okay, so who's the best player on the staff right now? Oof, on the staff? It really depends who shows up. There's, we have some great athletes. So, um, and it also depends on the attitude of 645 who's ready to play and who's not. So I, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to get anybody to to be play harder against me. I won't say anything. <laughs> All right. Well, what's your career high at Jefferson? How many points have you put up? We don't only play to like uh, seven, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't brag about that. <laughs> All, right. All right. Good. Well, I mean, everybody's working from home right now. What uh, other than keeping in touch with your players and your staff and so on and and planning for the future? What have you been doing around the house? Um, I guess I'm more of a doer, so I just, uh, I have an accent wall. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm almost finished. I'm the worst artist in the world, but it's turned out pretty good. Um, it's cubes. Maybe I can take it to it. And then um, I had a birthday party the other day. Um, well, I guess a party because uh, I, I, I made pinatas and I decided I told my friends and family that I wouldn't let them not be a part of it. So I put their pictures on it and I posted it up around the house and they have their, uh, pinatas <laughs> so all my friends could be here for my birthday and did you uh take a swing at them yet not yet i told them they didn't show up to the actual party so i'll have to, okay. I'll have to take them out <laughs> good planning hey when when you were growing up and i know you, you played a lot of different sports but uh, since tennis has become your 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 major uh focus uh, did you idolize any professional tennis players growing up yeah, um, actually, Stefan Edberg, I really, really enjoyed watching him. And then Patrick Rafter, once uh, Edberg was done, one of my favorite players. They play a very similar style game, but those two were the ones that I really, really um, liked watching and liked performing and playing. And so I kind of I styled my game around theirs. And, it's, and right now, that style is so different than anybody else that's out on the tour. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm hoping somebody can come back that can serve in volley and chip and charge and do that kind of stuff but I haven't seen anybody quite yet Federer is the closest one okay so if you could and I'll include those guys if you could play any professional tennis player just for fun to get out on the court who would you choose I mean you have to choose Federer I don't think anybody would choose not Federer like just just his grace and the way he handles the game is pretty incredible so I, i'd love to be out there and um you know i've been, been fortunate enough to be at some uh pro events that i coach um like last year at wimbledon where i was um helping coach a, a player so i got i get to meet him from time to time but um being on the court is a different story <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine yeah hey uh it seems like we're seeing and i'll talk about the women's side of tennis that the the youth, the young players, we're seeing more and more younger players probably skip college and go right into to pro tennis. Have you seen a change in that now in the last few years? Um, it's, it's decreased over the years because used to be 14, 15, they started their, um, it's called the um, Futures event, and so it used to start earlier. So now the, the time delay has been a lot longer, even on the women's side. A lot of them are a lot older, so uh, there is quite a bit of of um, ITF players, there's girls around the world that do go pro. Um, it's just such a hard sport to make it because you have to crack into the top 100 to may really make some money. So, um, you know, out of those 50 to probably 75 girls that go pro, only maybe one or zero of them are going to make it. So it's, it's a very difficult sport. So we try to 
try to talk them into coming to college first. Sometimes, you know, it's really tough because we're, we're talking to girls all over the world and that's kept me very busy here in quarantine, talking to Brazil and then calling Australia and then, you know, calling the next country. But, um, but it's something that uh, I think that college is the best pathway to the professional league and we're still working on that in the college tennis game. Okay. What has drawn the international players to the University of Arizona? You've had great success bringing these girls from all over the world. There, there's, there's obviously something there that, that draws them to the U of A. What is it? Well, I think the school is just, to me, it's one of the best universities, if not the best university of balance in the world with our academics and athletics. And so I, I think just it, it draws itself with what we what we can offer as well. Um, you know, I think the sunny weather always helps, but uh, being in the Pac-12 and competing amongst the best is something that we can really um, sell. And, and really, people want to, if they want to be the best, they have to be in the Pac-12 because we're going to have the national championship almost every year. So we got to be able to be able to compete at the top. Okay, so when you're around the house and you're obviously staying active and so on and you need that snack, what's your go-to snack right now as we're all, uh, all at home? Oh, man, that's the greatest part about this, I think, is that uh, I'm learning how to really cook some stuff. I actually made ratatouille. I didn't even know what that was until about a day ago. So I've, I've changed it up every single day. I think today's chicken marsala on the docket, and I'm just trying new dishes and learning how to become a chef. So um, I usually don't have time to cook the kind of stuff. Usually it's a quick instant rice or something. But, um, you know, I think my, um, my culinary skills will be, become great after the end of this. Outstanding. See, there's, there's a positive side to all of this, I think. We can you've look got, at it that way. You've got to find some kind of silver lining in everything. Right. Yeah, I, I asked you before about some of your favorite professional tennis players. I shouldn't forget the fact that you played on the ATP tour for a while. Uh, what, you know, what was that like for you? And, um, you know, what, uh, what was the lifestyle out on the circuit? I think the lifestyle is this a uh, glitz and glamour kind of road and it is um, complete opposite. Um, basically you are going five days in some country and then you fly out and you go to the next. And um, you know, my, my goal was always to learn the three words in the language that was, um, that would help me the most. So please, thank you, and help me. Because those are the three words I learned in basically every single language when I was in Finland, then flying to Sweden, then going to Estonia. Like wherever I was going, I learned those three words and they kind of got me through each country. But it's, it's a very lonely road um, because you travel by yourself, you pay for your own expenses, you have to fly to country to country, you lose contact with lots of friends and family. So that was the hardest part. I had an amazing time. I would I recommend it for everybody because you get to see so much of the world, meet some really cool people um, on the pro circuit. You know, you're meeting all of these great athletes. Um, some of them make it, a lot of them don't. But they, if if they're grinding, you know, if we're grinding out in McAllen, Texas, and then flying yourself to Helsinki and going the next week to you know uh, Riga, Latvia, which was some of our past you know, and traveling with some of these guys, you became really good friends. So I met a lot of great contacts, especially for this job. But that's really helped, uh, you know, me grow. Um, so I've been very, very fortunate. And I think it was one of the best things I've, I've ever done is go out there and grind it out and learn, really learn about myself on the, on the road. Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, some words in different languages. Now, when you're on the phone recruiting to some of these international players, uh, how does the communication work? Do most of them all speak English? Um, it, that's that's the question. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. That's why we have a um, we have all kinds of tests to test them to get them in. So sometimes they don't they don't qualify. Sometimes they're um, they're TOEFL tests or IELTS. There's a lot of different tests. They aren't high enough to get in. And so unfortunately, we lose some recruits because their English isn't good enough. So um, it really depends on on how badly they want it as well and how much they're willing to learn. Ryan, you've done a great job. I want to say congratulations. Uh, I know I wish we were all back outside right now and uh, playing the sports that we love, but uh, look forward to getting back together again. And uh, I know that uh, the, the fans miss getting out to see your women's team play, and, and hopefully uh, you know, that will be resolved here pretty soon. Yeah, we all hope uh, in the end it'll be solved quicker. But I think, um, you know, I think everyone on our staff is doing a great job and, the, and our um, team is, is out working. So we're excited to bring this uh, new product that we're bringing to uh, Arizona fans and, you know, the best fans in the world. And um, I'll give this quick shout out. I'll show you the pinatas real okay. quick. Right. Yeah, got to see this. I'll, I'll show you this real quick. We'll, we'll go over here. I don't know if you can see that. This will be a first. This will be a first. There you go. 
There you go. Okay. <laughs> Me out of family. So oh, that, I, guess, I guess that's a shout out to my friends and family. <laughs> All right. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Bear down, everybody. All right. Ryan Stoutland, head women's tennis coach at the University of Arizona. And we'll see you next time on Bear Down with Brian Jeffries.